A quick review. We found last day that if we went from a node to a node, if the ends were the same, we started with one football. To go to the next allowed resonance, we had to add another football. And every time we went to the next resonance, we had to add a football. Now, that means we're going from one football to two footballs to three footballs. Our footballs have to get smaller to fit. And if I go from the first to the second, I have to double the number of footballs. They have to be half as big. Now, since two footballs makes a wavelength, that means my wavelength is getting half as big when I go from the first to the second arm on it. By the wave equation, if the wavelength gets half as big, the frequency doubles, okay? Now, so my wavelength starts out the longest it'll fit between the endpoints, in this case node to node, and then I get half of that wavelength, a third, a fourth, and because of the wave equation, that means that the frequency has to get bigger by a factor of two and then three and then four to compensate. And so if 100 hertz is my fundamental, I would then also have resonance of 200 and 300 and 400 and 500 and so forth. Now, that's only if the ends are the same. If the ends are different, like in the case of the hacksaw blade, where it goes from a node to an anti-node, where it's clamped to the post as a node because it can't move, the free end is an anti-node. Well, in that case, I start with only half a football, and that changes everything. How you start determines the behavior of the system. If I start with only half a football, and it takes two footballs to make a wavelength, I've only got a quarter of a wavelength. So that means that the wavelength is four times the length of the system. Not twice, four times. Now that gives me my fundamental frequency if I use my wave equation. Now, the next allowed harmonic has to add one football. I still have a node at the clamped end and an anti-node at the free end, but now I have to add another node and another anti-node. And what I've done is gone from a half football to one and a half, or three half footballs. I've tripled the number of footballs that fit in, fit in the system. By adding one, since I only started with a half, I've tripled the number of footballs. That means the footballs are getting one third as big. That means the wavelength's getting one third as big. That means the frequency has to triple. And what I end up with here is not the second harmonic, but the third harmonic. And that's what's different about these types of resonances. When the ends are the same, I get all the harmonics. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When they're different, I only get the odd harmonics. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and so forth. See if your neighbor's okay with that. See if your neighbor understands that. between two poles, and the wire is 100 meters long. We're told that one quarter of the way from one end, there's a bird named Tweety. I can't draw, but that's Tweety. And the Tweety is jumping up and down with a period of half a second. And we're told that when she does that, uh, we end up with a standing wave at the fourth harmonic. Now that means there's going to be four 
footballs, and so that means the pattern is going to look like this. It's going to look like that at one time, and then one half period later it's going to look like this. <coughs> Where this distance here is 25 meters. Now what we can see is that this is the period for the fourth harmonic. That means that the frequency for the fourth harmonic is going to be 1 over the period. That's going to be 1 over 0.5 or 2 hertz. Now, is, is Tweety jumping at a note or an anti-note? Note. Yeah, a note. And it's a quasi-note because there is some tiny bit of movement as she puts energy into the system, but nowhere near the amplitude that we've got of these anti-notes. Now, this problem is a very, very old exam problem. I know how old it is because I wrote it back in the olden days when my kids were young enough that they needed an adult to go skiing with them. And so I would go skiing with them. As soon as they got old enough to go by themselves, uh, I stopped going because I was just falling down the, the mountain. Anyway, my, my youngest son and I were in the chairlift when it got stopped. And we're just sitting there wasting time. I had an exam coming up. So I started writing exam questions by setting up standing waves. So I got my feet swinging and I found just the right frequency to get this thing a standing wave. My son was terrified. Um, <laughs> the other people were not amused. <laughs> anyway, that's how this problem was written. So the next part of this problem asks us for the wavelength. Well, the wavelength for the fourth harmonic would be two footballs. Since one football is 25 meters, this is going to be 50 meters. Or you could use that equation that's going to be on the front page of the uh, exam, and that would be number of footballs times lambda over 2 is equal to the length of the system. This would be 4 footballs times lambda over 2 is equal to the length of the, of the wire is 100 meters, and this is going to give me lambda is equal to 50 meters. Okay? Now the speed of waves on that wire, I can find two waves. Since they're transverse waves, I can always use this equation. The square root of the tension over the mass density. Um, but I don't have the tension. In this problem, we're going to calculate the tension, but I don't know it, so I can't use it to find the, the speed. I know what the mu is. Remember, the mu is just the mass of the wire over the length of the wire. And we're told that the wire has a mass of 60 kilograms and a length of 100 meters, or 0.6 kilograms per meter. Uh, but we don't know the tension. But we do know that all waves, standing waves included, satisfy the wave equation. And with standing waves, it satisfies the wave equation for every, every harmonic. So this is true for the first harmonic. This is true for the second harmonic. This is true for the third harmonic. And in our case, we care about the fourth harmonic. Because we know the fourth frequency is 2 hertz, we know the fourth wavelength is 50 meters, and that gives me 100 meters per second. And it's just a coincidence that that's the same number as the distance between the poles. Just trying to make the, the math easy. Would it not matter which harmonic we use? Uh, it would not matter which harmonic we used. I could also do this with the first harmonic. Uh, but in order to do it with the first harmonic, I'd have to draw the first harmonic. And in that case, the wavelength would be 200 meters, and the frequency would be one-fourth of that, or half a hertz. And so I'd get a half times 200, I'd get the same answer. Yeah, but the speed doesn't change. The speed does not change. 
I get the same speed for all of the harmonics. Good point. Because that speed only depends on the tension and how we made the wire. Now, we can go back and use this equation to find the tension. If the speed is 100 meters per second, and I'm looking for the tension, where this mass density is 0.6 kilograms per meter, I just square both sides. And what I get is 10,000 is equal to the tension divided by 0.6. And that gives me the tension is equal to 6,000. And since tension is a force, that would be in units of newtons. OK? Check that your neighbor understands that problem. It's a problem similar to what you would have on your exam next week. Is this tension or period? That's period. Because that only works for the first harmonic. That, that is only true for the first harmonic. You want to put caution tape around that formula. Don't be using that one. Use the wave of pain. Okay. Last day, we looked at this, this old exam problem, and in this problem, we had a, a string that is held over a pulley by a mass, and that is forcing this point here to not move. It's being held down securely on that pulley, so that's a, a node. We're told that the other end is attached to a frictionless, massless ring, and that's what sets off the ding, 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 the gong, that says, oh, that's a free end. <coughs> and as a free end, I have to have an anti-node. Now, we solved this last day. We used the tension in the string to find that the speed of waves was 300 meters per second. Now, we're asked to find the third harmonic frequency. But frequencies you can't draw. Wavelengths you can. So the fundamental frequency has a wavelength that goes from a node to an anti-node without going through anything else. And so that means I've only got the length of that string is equal to one-fourth of the wavelength. Or I could say the wavelength is four times the length of that string. Well, the length between the node and the anti-node is the two meters. And so that's going to be eight meters. So the fundamental wavelength is eight meters. Because my endpoints are different, I go straight to the third harmonic. <coughs> Instead of having half a football, I have three half footballs. And talking about footballs on the day after Super Bowl is okay. Okay? So if I've got three times as many footballs fitting in the same space, they must be one third as big. So lambda three, if lambda one was eight meters, Lambda 3 is going to be 8 meters over 3. Now, if you want to find that another way, just take the number of footballs times lambda over 2 equals the length of the system. I have 3 half footballs times lambda over 2 is equal to 2 meters. And if I solve for lambda, I get 8 thirds meters. Okay, either way you do it. Now we find the frequency by using the wave equation for the third harmonic. This is going to be 300 meters per second. I'm looking for F3, and this is 8 thirds meters. 
That gives me an F3 equal to 908 hertz. So about 111, 111 hertz. And it's the third harmonic. <coughs> okay, we were racing through that at the end of class, so I thought I'd just slow it down for you. Check that your neighbor's on the bus. Do a buddy check, please. Okay. The, uh, the longitudinal standing waves that we're going to be primarily dealing with are sound waves that are traveling through each other along a column of air. Now, you've set up these standing waves before when you're sitting around with one of these bottles, whatever it is, and you just blow across the top creating white noise or all the frequencies. One of those frequencies is going to resonate with this system. Okay? Now, I have here, uh, essentially it's just a column of air, and there's water in this beaker, this uh, cylinder rather, and the water's just at the right length so that the fundamental frequency of this column of air is 341 hertz. Now, that means that at 341 hertz, I'm going to get a, a pattern, a standing wave pattern. There's the water down there. That, the surface of the water forces me to have a node because the air molecules can't go that way. There's a wall. The open end of the cylinder is an antinode. And so that means that the longest wave that will fit from the node to the antinode looks like that. And we call that F1, and it's 341 hertz. Yes? Wouldn't it be a longitudinal wave, though? It's a longitudinal wave, and that's what we're talking about now. We just transitioned to longitudinal wave. And uh, I'll come back and tell you why that uh, representation is not a good one in just a minute. I still go from a node to an anti-node. Now, I have here a, a tuning fork that is 341.3 hertz. And really, we set this up so that it would resonate with that. Now, can you hear that? Can the people in the back hear that? If you can, you're really good, because I can't hear it from here. But the tuning fork is sounding. Now listen carefully. Now everyone in the room can hear it, right? When I put it over the column of air, it sends up a standing wave, a sloshing, if you will, inside the tube. And now you're hearing both the the tuning fork and the resonance in the, in the air. Now you're just hearing the tuning fork. Now, if I take a tuning fork that has twice the frequency, is it going to resonate with this uh, system that goes from a node to an anti-node? Do I get even harmonics when I've got a node at one end and an anti-node at the other? I don't. And listen, now you can hear the tuning fork Okay, <laughs> wait a second. The laws of physics are temporarily out of order. <laughs> okay, there's no, there's no echo, but you can still hear the, okay. Now, this is three times the fundamental, or 1024 hertz. You can hear the tuning fork, and now you can hear the echo of the air column. So we're, we're setting up a standing wave inside the 
air column. Okay, good. Now, here's the thing. This is how we used to draw standing waves. And it made sense, because if we look at all the blue arrows, that gives us a displacement of the actual string that had the standing wave at one instant in time. It, it, all the blue arrows gave me the, the displacement. And so this one was down, this one was up, this one was down, this one was up. And then half a period later, the red arrows gave me the displacement. So this thing just was blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. And the string actually did that. Now, <clears throat> with longitudinal waves, I apologize, but this is what we decided to do long before I was born. We decided to use the same representation. But it's a crummy representation because nothing's actually going like this. It's going like this, okay? Now, if I look at all the blue arrows, that will be what the displacement will be at one instant in time. And you'll notice that all of the molecules in this football are all going to the right. And all the molecules in this football, the blue arrows, are all going to the left. So this node is being crunched. It's being, it's being hit from both sides. Okay? Now, if I look over here, all of these blue arrows are to the left, all these blue arrows are to the right. This node is being deserted. And this one is being crunched. Then half a period later, all the red arrows are what the displacement looks like. And so all of these molecules are going to the left, all of these are going to the right. This one that used to be crunched is now being deserted. This one's being crunched, okay? Now let me see if I can give you a visual representation of that. Oh, let me finish apologizing. We still use these footballs to represent this sloshing motion left and right. The only thing it's good for is telling you where the nodes are and where the anti-nodes are. But it can sometimes be confusing because you expect things to go this way when instead they're going that way. Okay? So let me give yes. Is the wavelength still two footballs? Yes, the wavelength is still two footballs. <coughs> We're going to find out that nearly everything that we learned about standing waves with the transverse case will still be true for the longitudinal case. I have here some magic wands that I brought from Diagonale. And uh, what I'd like you to do, they're connected with springs here. And I'd like you to concentrate on these yellow dots. These yellow dots represent molecules of air. And these molecules of air are in a tube, in a pipe, and I'm going to set up a standing wave. If I do it correctly, there will be some of these yellow dots that don't move, and some of them that move a lot. Okay, so let me see if I can try that. Uh, not there yet. Okay, I think that's it. Do I have some that aren't moving? Yep. Very close. Yeah. Okay, now, because I doubted myself and my ability to do that, I did it on the computer as well. I'm going to set up nodes at those blue points, and when the leftmost node is being crunched, its neighbor is being deserted. And then the next neighbor is being crunched, and the last neighbor is being deserted. Now watch what happens as this, this oscillation goes back and forth. Each node goes from being crunched to deserted, and then crunched again, and then deserted. Now, if you want to actually set up these standing waves, what I suggest you do is go into your bathroom, lock the door, get your naked self into the tub, 
and then scoot your naked bum along the bottom of that tub until you get all the water going all at once. Just all the water goes out the tub that side. All the water goes out the tub that side. That's F1. Okay? Then scoot your bum twice that frequency, and what you'll see is that now the water will slosh in the middle, and slosh in the middle, and slosh in the middle. And that's F2. And then scoot your bum three times that, and you're going to have, I can't do it, I need another arm out the chest here to, to, to do something that's weird. <laughs> like nothing else that I'm talking about is weird. <laughs> okay. Okay, now, if we use that terrible representation of the footballs, what it tells us is just where the nodes are and where the antinodes are. There's a node, and there's an antinode, there's a node. Now, what would be a better representation is a bunch of dots, where the dots are, okay? And so this is what the sloshing would look like. And if you look at one particular node, it goes from being crunched to deserted to crunched to deserted. Okay. New demo. I have here a, an aluminum rod. It's just standard piece of aluminum. It's about seven feet tall, as you can see. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, I am. Okay. I'm going to put some rosin on this glove to make it sticky and I'm going to use that stickiness to create some white noise. Uh, I'm going to squeeze this in the middle of the rod, forcing that to be a node. And I can make it sing. An ordinary rod can sing. Now. People, if you had special glasses that could see microscopically, what you would see is sound waves. Not sound waves going through air, but sound waves going through aluminum. And those sound waves are moving along this, this uh, uh, rod, left and right, and creating standing waves. Now again, if you could see microscopically, you'd see the biggest oscillations here, a little bit of oscillation there, no oscillation there, a little bit of oscillation there, and a lot of oscillation there. Okay? Now, you can also set up a transverse standing wave on this system by hitting it on the side with a hammer. Very different frequency. These are longitudinal standing waves going from an anti-node to a node to an anti-node. Now, folks, if I squeeze it here instead of there, if I squeeze it here and do the same thing I did before, the pitch is going to change. Is it going to go higher or lower? Higher or lower? Talk to your neighbor, you're going to vote in just a moment. Okay, let's vote. Those who say higher. Those who say lower. Okay, the lowers win. <laughs> but this is physics. We can check. There's the first frequency. Higher. Now all of you that chose lower, I would ask, what were you thinking? And I'll tell you what you were thinking. You were thinking that this part of the rod got longer, and longer systems meant longer wavelengths meant lower frequencies that the long pipes in an organ are what give you the low notes. 
What you didn't notice was that this distance got shorter. And where I'm squeezing it has to be a node. This is free, so it has to be an anti-node. The distance from node to anti-node just cut in half. Now, the first time I rang it, I was squeezing in the middle, forcing that to be a node, and the ends were antinodes. How many footballs? One. One. This is the first case we've seen where we've had the endpoints the same, but it didn't go from node to node, it went from antinode to antinode. But I'm still starting with one football, and that makes all the difference. This is going to have a wavelength of twice the length of the rod, and that's going to be the first harmonic. Now when I squeeze it a quarter of the way down the rod, I'm forcing that point to be a node. This still is an anti-node, and so the distance from anti-node to node just cut in half. Now, if this is an anti-node and this is a node, this must be an anti-node, this must be a node, and this must be an anti-node. <coughs> this predicts that, well, two things. First of all, what frequency am I going to get compared to what I used to get? Twice, double. This is going to be F2. The wavelength's half as big, so the frequency is double. But the other thing that this predicts is that I'm squeezing it there, making a node, but there's another node right over here, a quarter from the other side. Let's test that. That's, that's an interesting prediction that physics is making. This rod is ringing right there, and so if I grab it right there, it stops. But, this predicts that it's not ringing right there, so if I grab it there, it keeps going. I can, whoa, I can grab it there, it keeps going. I grab it anywhere else, and it stops, thank goodness, okay? Now, what's gonna happen? They're all going to be hearing it. Oh, great. Oh. <laughs> Trust the force. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. How's your dog doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so just as an aside, do they do that much in your math class? <laughs> oh man, I would hate to be a math teacher. That sucks. <laughs> now. Most of the longitudinal standing waves that we'll be dealing with happen inside an organ pipe, um, like this. Now organ pipes come in two flavors, open and closed. And by open we mean open at both ends. This end is obviously open, it's got a great big uh, hole in it. But the other open end is right here. Now this open end is is shaped such that when you blow, you create turbulence or white noise. That frequency, which resonates with this length of tube, is going to be the one that, that is amplified, and we hear. Okay? Now, because the ends are open, they have to be antinodes. Now, people, I can't go straight from an antinode to an antinode without having a node in between. If I just went from an antinode to an antinode, that's wind going right through the, the pipe. <laughs> the node is needed for the, the sloshing, the whoosh, the whoosh, the whoosh. And that sloshing is what you hear as sound, okay? Now, how many footballs? One football. And it takes two footballs to make a wavelength, so the wavelength is twice the length of that pipe. Look familiar? 
Okay? Uh, the frequency is 1 Charlie, V over 2L. Okay? That, that formula is only good for the fundamental frequency when the ends are the same. Don't be using that formula for everything. Okay? Now, if we close a pipe, what we mean by that is we close it at one end. If you close it at both ends, that's a box and you can't get sound out. Okay, you just close it at one end. That forces that closed end to be a node. The open end is still an anti-node. Now I can only fit at the fundamental, I can only fit a half football in the, in the pipe. That means I've only got a quarter of a wavelength. That means the wavelength is four times the length of that, that pipe, okay? It's still the fundamental. Now folks, when you're building a pipe organ, your low notes are made by the long pipes. And at some point, you, you just can't get longer pipes because they run into your ceiling, unless you've got a, a, a very high ceiling. So one of the things you can do is make all your low notes closed pipes. Because in a closed pipe, you don't have to fit half the, free, half the wavelength in there. You only have to fit a quarter of the wavelength in there. So you can get the same note with half the length of your pipe. Now, what's going to happen to that frequency when I put my hand over the end of the, of the pipe? Talk to your neighbor, what's going to happen? <laughs> Is anyone else worried about how many old stinky professors have had their lips on that? Nope. I'm probably going to come down with Ebola tomorrow. Okay. So, I hope you predicted that when I put my hand on the end, the wavelength would double, the frequency would cut in half, would get lower. So let's try it. You did it! <laughs> Physics is good. Now, let's look at the next highest frequency that will resonate. If the pipe is open at both ends, I have to go to the next frequency by adding a whole football. In this case, I went from one football to two footballs. I doubled the number of footballs. That means my footballs have to be half as big to fit. That means my wavelength just got half as big. That means my frequency just did what? Double, okay? So now I'm looking at the second harmonic. If, on the other hand, I have a closed pipe, by that I mean closed at one end, I still have to add one football. But I started with half a football, and so now I tripled the number of footballs. I went from a half to three halves. If I triple the number of footballs that fit in the same space, my foot footballs have to get smaller by a factor of three. That means the frequency is bigger by a factor of three, I've gone to the third harmonic. Okay? The third harmonic. So once again, even with organ pipes, when the ends are the same, open to open, I get all the harmonics, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. When one, is one end is closed and one end is open, I only get the odd harmonics the odd harmonics, okay? So this is the summary, ends are the same, all of them, ends different, odd. Now, last week we did a demo with fire, and now we're ready to understand it. That flame is just a fancy way of making a sputtering sound or white noise with all the different frequencies. <laughs> This tube is open at both ends. So that means at its fundamental, how many footballs am I going to have inside of this tube? One. It's going to go, it'd be that one up there, it'll go from an anti-node to an anti-node. 
one football. That means the wavelength is going to be twice the length of this tube. And that is a particular wavelength with a particular frequency. That frequency. Now, if I were to tell you that that tube is one meter long, could you tell me what frequency you just heard? With your neighbor, figure it out. It should be easy. You should be able to do it in your head. That's what dominates when you just give white noise to a system. Uh, the fundamental dominates the other harmonic. And the wavelength, in this case, is two footballs. And I, know I only have one football inside the tube. The tube is one meter long, so one football is one meter. That means the wavelength is two meters. What do I use for the speed of sound? 343. 343. Now, here's where our answer is going to be very, very approximate. Because I was trying to find a fancy way to have my sputtering, um, I'm probably heating up the air inside the tube, so it's going faster than 343 meters per second. So my answer is going to be wrong a little bit. But you can see that if I solve for F1, F1 is just going to be 343 over 2, or 171.5 hertz. Now, if the air is hot, the sound wave speed is going to be a little bit higher than this, and I will get a frequency a little bit higher than 171. Okay? Questions on that? I would have to change the temperature of the air from inside the tube to the air outside the whole ear. Oh, um, the inside the tube would determine the frequency because that's the, the speed at which these uh, traveling waves are going inside the tube. That would make a disturbance at the end, but that disturbance would travel to your ear at room temperature than 343. So it would be a higher frequency than you heard, that you heard, but it'd still get across the room in the same amount of time. Yes, sir? Well, wouldn't it have to do with like the density of the air? So if you're heating it, it's less dense, wouldn't it have We find actually that the speed of sound in air doesn't depend on the density at all. It just depends on the temperature, just the temperature. Uh, we found that uh, a couple weeks ago. Okay, now, um, Here's the case where one end is closed and has to be a node. That was the case for this air column here. The water formed the closed end that was the node, and the open end was the anti-node. And when we had the fundamental frequency, we were exciting this shape. And when we had the third harmonic, we had something like that. That would be F3, which was 3 times 341, which was 1024. Okay? Now, here's the type of problem you can expect on the exam and on your homework. The lowest four frequencies in which an air column will support standing waves are measured to be 75, 225, 375, and 525 hertz. What is the length of the air column? With your neighbor, let's see if you can crack that. So we can just do, you can do the first part on it. So it's 343 plus 75 times 2L. 
Okay, folks, we only have two minutes, so let's do this together. The way you do this is you, first of all, figure out whether this air column is open at both ends or open at only one end. The lowest frequency is F1. The key is this next one that resonates. Is it twice F1 or three times F1? Yeah, this is three times 75. So that makes it F3, and this is 5 times 75, so that's F5. This is uh, 7 times 75, so that's F7. So this is a column that is closed at one end. Now the fundamental frequency is the longest that fits between a node and an anti-node, and that looks like that. That would be F1. And so that means that lambda 1 is going to be four times the length of the two. That's what I'm looking for, that right there. So if I can find lambda one, lambda one, I just divide that by four. Well, V is equal to F1 lambda one. This is 343 meters per second. F1 is 75 hertz. I can solve for lambda one. I can put it in here and solve for L and I have my answer, okay? That's how you work these problems. We're out of time. We'll practice some more on Wednesday.